All right, I'm joined by Jason Wrights, the team president of the Washington Commanders. And yes, Commanders, it's been a year now since the uh, rollout of the rebrand from the unveiling to the mascot introduction and anything in between. Uh, what do you think you did right? And what's, you know, and you used to be a player, what play <laughs> would you like to have? Sure. Oh, that's good. That's good. Well, um, thanks for having me, first off. Yeah. Um, you know, I think if we look back um, very quickly, when we started to talk to our fans, we realized this was not a marketing effort, wasn't really a rebranding. It was an emotional journey for our fans. The vast majority of our fans love the old name, the logo, the identity of something that was steeped in their families. And irrespective of how anybody outside of this area felt, that's what was our starting point. And so the thing, the play that we did right and I would do again is that we took our time and we allowed the fans to get updated along the process, we shared out where things were. And while that was great for information sharing and getting feedback, it was actually more important to allow us all to go on a grieving process, to deal with the old name um, being gone and ideas of what the new one could be um, when there were restrictions on that, letting people work through that so that by the time got around to announcing a year ago, people had started to get to a place of peace in that grieving process. Um, and, and that's not something I ever expected. Um, and that allowed us to have you know, a celebration and a launch where people had started to sort of make peace with where things were headed, right? And that is something I would absolutely do again. And uh, not only was it you know, the right thing to do psychologically for the area, but it was great for us to get to know our fans. We heard amazing stories of what the brand and name meant to folks. And as a result, when we landed on Commanders, we thought, we think that it captured a lot of that essence, the sense of service, of mission to something greater than yourself. An idea that dedication to community and a cause is what defines this area more than anything. That came through really clear as we talked to folks. So that's that's something I would absolutely do again, as hard as that was, <laughs> and as painful as that was at time, to take that time and to have that dialogue with the public it was absolutely uh, the right thing to do. And, you know, in that process, we, we had to get real with ourselves too and recognize that um, it was not going to be uh, a resounding embrace of the new name right away. That became clear right away. And so my hope was that we would get to neutral sentiment within a year's time. That was going to be an A. That was going to be an A effort for us. And we got there in about three weeks after launch. The sentiment was neutral. Um, and it started to grow from there. And uh, and I think we have seen really great momentum since then. You know, we had a record year in merchandise sales. Um, we helped to lead the NFL's growth in uh, attendance and ticket sales. Um, uh, our, we are number three in new suite sales in the NFL this last year. And part of that is people starting to, to embrace uh, change in a new era. And uh, it's a big credit to our fans who have driven a lot of that. They started to create the fan rituals that are organically coming up, not stuff that we're pushing down. Like we've done some stuff like Mando, the service dog, like right. awesome, awesome. Right. But the fans are doing the real work here. The Commandalorians, <laughs> left hand up, you know, like people are starting to embrace and put meaning in this. And that's more than I could have imagined in a, a year's time. And those are some of the things that I've seen that at games, I've seen it at, you know, certain, uh, you know, sanctioned events and and so forth. Um, and you said that, uh, and I've heard you say it in the past, you kind of reiterated it here, uh, listening and feedback were kind of at the heart of this selection. But I'm going to tell you personally, I haven't met a single person who likes the name Commanders, and maybe I'm not hanging out in the right circles, whatever. But the, uh, you know, the reasons vary. I'm going to get to a social media poll that we conducted this week in a moment, but the vast majority of those who responded uh, did not like the name. So what has been the uh, experience? I mean, you spoke a little bit about the experience with the, uh, with the uh, fan response, yeah. um, you know, uh, you know, how, how hard has it been to kind of gain that, uh, I, that think, traction? I think I hear three things when I'm out in the community on this and that we also see through social listening. Right. Um, the first the first thing that I hear consistently is like, you know, it's growing on me. <laughs> getting used to it. I'm okay. getting used to it, which is exactly what we expected. 
it's starting to roll off of people's tongues. It's the way that people don't have to stutter when they say it <laughs> as much as they used to, right? It used to be, you'd say, oh, I'm a, I'm a, oh, fan. Now it's, I'm a commander's fan. It's starting to roll off the tongue. And that familiarity will allow people to infuse it with meaning and comfort will grow over time. And that's certainly starting to happen. And that's something- Has, I it, has it hurt that you can't really shorten it the way you can the old name? Yes, that's right. Yeah. That's right. But it's, a, but it's fine. There are plenty of folks like that. You know, like yeah. there's, there's other teams like that too. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's starting to roll off of people's tongues, right? It's, right. Getting, it's getting more and more familiar and that will help <clears throat> with affinity over time. The second is the folks in the service community here, the military community, love the name. Mm -hmm. um, they feel like there's something that really represents them, the leadership qualities, their experience embodying in it, embodied in it. And because so much of the area through uh, being directly in military service or in government service or in nonprofits in this area have this sense of leadership and all of that, they, they see themselves in it. And I hear that a lot. I hear a lot of thank yous for putting that representation out there. And then the third um, uh, uh, positive thing uh, that I hear about it um, in the marketplace is that when we're winning, people like it. <laughs> when we're not winning, people don't like it. It's right, very, that's how it is with any brand. It very, right? like, it very much ebbs and flows. And so right. depending on when you take the social media poll, as what right. we found, when, we're, when we were on our win streak in the middle of the season, people right. are like, you know what? I'm really feeling this name. Yeah. I'm going to do this around the name. I'm going to do that around the name. And then when we didn't make the playoffs at the end of the year, people were like, I can't stand this. <laughs> I can't stand this. Everything is terrible. And that's just part of what we'll ride. And I think with familiarity yeah. and with increased success on the field, it will st people will acclimate and they'll continue to do what we're really happy they've done. And that's put their own uh, creativity behind it and continue to create more new fan rituals that have meaning. And two main responses that we've seen and that I've heard in, you know, just the last year, um, obviously support of the old name, which obviously we're, we, we're not doing anything about that. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, first of all, let's just, let's just focus on that piece of it real quick. Yeah. Um, you can't do anything about that. So I'm going to flip it here with the question, how many fans that left, because of the former name, have you noticed return to the fold? Yeah, I think with with winning and with better business processes, we've started to recapture those folks, right? Um, I think uh, for us, we're seeing a sort of generational transfer of fandom that's occurring. You know, the folks will still show up in their skins jerseys and, and, and wear their old gear to games, which is perfectly fine. Um, and then their kids have on new commander's gear. And we're starting to see a bit of a generational handing off of fandom that is organically allowing the name to morph into something new. And we were really intentional this year about celebrating our history and making sure that people felt like this was not an expansion franchise and that this was the same franchise that had been around since 1932, starting out as the Boston Braves and becoming the Redskins in 1937 and now the commanders as of last year um and uh that that lineage and that transition is starting to happen within our fans and their kids um and that is great to see and that is great to see and um some of the uniform design was really well taken this year the black jerseys for a segment of our fans were um, a big hit something they've been wanting for a long time even in the old name and moniker and so being able to allow that to lead into the new brand um has been good um and so uh, yeah, it's going to it's going to take time. It's going to take time for it to be uh, unanimously received and for people to be excited. It's going to take winning. Um, but I think both of those things are are ahead of us. Now, I'm going to get to the black uniforms and the uniforms in total, because I, I fancy myself a football fashionista. So I can't yes. have you on here, yes. not talk about yes. the fashion aspect of it. But the other response really the overwhelming response that uh, that we saw uh, in terms of the branding is basically, I'm not going to support this thing as long as Dan Snyder is attached to it. And that obviously puts you in a very difficult situation. Mm -hmm. You know, what is your message to fans that will only support the brand if Snyder goes? Yeah, I, I think it's what I tell everybody. When you're when you're supporting the team, when you're showing up to games, when you're buying gear and being proud to be a Commanders fan, 
um, it, it goes well beyond ownership. You know, the, the, the season tickets we sell, the suites that we sell, all of that stuff, that money that we make as a healthy business, it goes right back into Ron and the football team. It's the way that we were able to redo FedEx Field, um, the actual playing surface, which for many years was one of the worst in the NFL. And when our new administration got here, it was one of the first things we changed. We made a multi-million dollar investment there. That's where when people choose to support us, that's where the money goes. It goes to redoing FedEx Field, making it one of the better playing surfaces in the NFL from being one of the worst. It goes to changing the fields at the practice facility, completely transforming those so the guys can practice outside more throughout the year. It's um, next generation technology. It's paying for the nutritionists and the phlebotomists that support the guy's health. It's um, uh, it's for the data and analytics tech stack that we want to provide for our scouts. That's when you participate with us through fandom in any way, shape or form, whether that's vocally supporting the brand and more importantly, showing up to games and filling the stands that in a way that puts home field advantage for our players, the money that goes with that goes right back to supporting them and bringing the next Lombardi trophy to Washington. And uh, how has the ownership situation, there's some uncertainty around it these days, has that affected this effort in any way? For us, we just continue to to work in the same way we always have. You know, our our values are clear. You know, we, uh, we, we have organizational values that Ron and I developed for the entire organization while we were here, where we hold ourselves to a high standard, how we treat each other, how we engage with the public and our fans and the way that we run our, our organizations. They spell F-I-G-H-T and uh, fight for old DC, but it's uh, family impact growth on our trust. And those values inform a way of working that is consistent across the organization. So that doesn't change no matter what's going on. And, um, and for us, it has always been about being a reliable, healthy business that our fans deserve. They deserve people that can respond to them. Um, they deserve folks that have buttoned up process. They deserve high value for their season tickets and their experience here. Um, and that's what we're creating. You know, we'll ne- we're not perfect. Um, we're in the middle of a rebuild, but we have made remarkable progress since uh, the beginning of our time here. Season ticket member base has grown. We've got people that are excited to work here. The most diverse leadership team in the NFL that we've attracted here, high talent folks. The caliber that our fans have always deserved but hadn't always gotten. Um, and now it's time for us to to take the next step. Now, I know this question is kind of asking for a hypothetical answer, but if there was new ownership, can you see yourself having to go through this branding process again? Oh, my Lord. Uh, <laughs> no, I've not even thought about that. I've not even thought about that because yeah. um, in spite of a social media poll taken when the team's not doing well, right. it's in healthy shape. It's in healthy shape. And there are many other things that are much higher priorities um, for us to focus on going forward. Most importantly, finding a new dynamic and state-of-the-art home for this team. And and, and and that actually leads to the next question, really, is has has the name change um, sort of helped that effort to find, uh, you know, in terms of the new stadium and, uh, and, and just an increase in marketability, having yeah. a nickname that's not generating so much controversy? Yeah, I'll, yeah I'll, obviously, that's outside of a, a transaction or sale. It's the most confidential thing going on here, so I won't say much, but <laughs> I would say yes, it helps a lot. Okay, okay. And uh, in, in terms of the marketability, you said that the, um, you know, in it terms of jersey sales and all of that, all of that is. Yeah, it's in good shape. It's in really yeah. good shape. It's a record, a record year for us by a large margin. Um, okay. That's a good thing. It shows that, yeah, there, there's going to continue to be angst, right? Like we'd be naive to think that it'd be a triumphant parade around the new name and brand with something that was so old and so meaningful and so deep for people. It'd be It'd be a it'd be a, a miracle, and I wouldn't believe it. If it, if it were the case, um, and so we're on the journey we expect it to be on, and uh, the way fans are embracing it, wherever they're at on that journey, some further along on that journey than others, it's a really good thing. It's a really good thing, and we're on the upswing. And it's interesting that this anniversary of the rebrand falls in the same week as some milestone anniversaries, uh, important milestone anniversaries in franchise history. Monday marked. 40 years since the first Super Bowl win. And then Tuesday was 
the 35th anniversary of a game that I know you and I <laughs> were very, uh, it was very important to us, the uh, Doug Williams Super Bowl, yeah. um, you know, back uh, to cap off that uh, great 87 season. Um, with all of that, I mean, it kind of goes to your point that, you know, with winning comes, you know, uh, more affection for the brand. And, you know, how do you reconcile? Because look, it's, I mean, the reason why people are like, go back to the old man, go back to the old man. They 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 were yelling it during those Super yeah. Bowl runs. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like when you have championship, you know, this isn't, um, and I'm not going to name another team, but just it's not a situation where there's no championship glory yeah. attached to, That's right. you know, the tradition and, and Hall of Famers and all of that. So it's just, you know, obviously a shy of replicating that sort of success, which is easier yeah. said than done. I mean, yeah. is there an effort that you can do that, um, you know, sort of stems that tide until such time as the winning follows? Yeah, I mean, we got we got to win, period, right? And that's where we're all focused. We've we've transformed the culture here. We've got good people, processes. It's a great place to work for folks now, right? Like people are treated well here, so we've. We've jumped the shark on what was the most important thing for us. To do. Now it's time to win. Now it's time to win. You know, my job, as much as it is to build a healthy business, like I said, it's in support of Ron and winning. And that's going to do 90% of the work. I think the other 10%, we can do two things. And that's continue to talk to our fans, continue to listen to them about the ways that they want the brand to evolve. There's a reason Major Tutty is a hog. <laughs> right that that came from our fans that was from them that's what they wanted um continue to listen to them and that's a small percentage of what we can do uh to 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 move things forward um and uh, the the other thing that uh, the other thing that we can do is just um uh, is be present in the community i think the more that we can be out in dc and maryland and virginia as the commanders um, our community relations team, supporting the local schools in the area, supporting youth sports, showing up to the events that are meaningful for the community. It shows us being present. That's not something we always did here. Um, it was in the in the heyday when we were winning championships. One of the things that this franchise did great alongside that is that we're very present in meaningful ways in the community. I, I wouldn't say that we've done that consistently over mm -hmm. the last decade. And that's been a hallmark of our leadership team's approach is to um, re-emerge, get out of our ivory tower in Ashburn and be present everywhere else in the area. Heck, heck moving all of our business uh, operations down here to FedEx Field in Landover was a big part of that. We need to get out and get back to where our people are and where our fans are. Um, so that's another thing we can do. The more that we're out there, the more commanders rolls off the tongue and the more people see themselves in it in a positive way. Okay, so I have to. So now it's time to ask the fun question because, like I said, I'm a I, I pride myself on being a football fashionista. Yeah, I have all kinds of you know yeah. thoughts about the uniforms. I'm going to give you the positive feedback first. Love yeah. the love the burgundy. I love the matte yeah, yeah, yeah. burgundy yeah. helmet. I love yeah. the W. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Love that. I don't dig numbers on the side of the helmet so much. So the, I, I have mixed yeah. feelings about the black uniforms. Yeah. But I got to ask you: Will there be gold pants in the future? There could be. There could be. Uh, so we still have a fourth uniform that we can do. So okay, um, every team is allowed four total uniforms. Mm -hmm. um, you can only have two pants per uniform. So that's the that's the restriction. Um, you can only have two pants across the um, um, across the uniforms. So that's mm -hmm. the, that's the restriction. But with the fourth, I think there's some additional leeway where we can potentially get a, a third pant in there. But much like we did, but much like we did with um, uh, Major Teddy and the mascot design, we're going to really lean on the fans on this one. Okay. So um, a fourth uniform, I think, can come online earliest for the 2024 season. Okay. And the design process would start soon. Um, I think the way that we plan to approach that is to talk to our fans about what they want. Do they want a gold color rush approach to bring gold more prominently into the uniform? Do they want something that's more akin to what um, was very popular with the Wizards and Nationals and doing a cherry blossom themed um, uh, uniform? Is there something more DC focused that folks want? I'd really tribute to the city and its history. Um, and what are the different things that folks might want? 
and will allow our fans to point us in the right direction and then go all in with Nike and their creative designers to make that vision a reality. Well, that's a very uh, interesting uh, piece of it. Uh, the I think the the biggest gripe that I had with it when it was unveiled was that the, you know, there's not an, the, the thing that I loved about the old uniforms is that you had, you had the burgundy and then the gold was a great accent mm -hmm. color mm -hmm. on that. And you don't really see that in these uniforms, especially the white ones where yeah. it's almost like you guys are trying to make Jim Zorn right for the maroon and black thing a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you know, I, I, I do like seeing the black, don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, but what, what, I mean, what about like more of a, a gold yeah. Yeah, accent, yeah, working yeah, gold more into the... You know, I think working gold and more something we've heard from our, uh, we've heard from a set of our fans. Yeah. Uh, and so th that's how these things evolve. Yeah. Over, right. You, I think the uniforms look great this year and they got, they got good reviews overall. You know, the home uniforms were classic. The away uniforms, the whites were meant to be futuristic, leaning into the future. And the blacks were just an ode to the fans who've been asking for that for a long time with a heavy military influence and a aesthetic to it. So they each had their direction and their vision. Um, and the fans get feedback and we continue to, to build on those going forward. And the, and the fourth Jersey will be one that really gets informed by, by what the fans want. All right. But we're not going to have pink, like, uh, like the wizards. Uh, I don't, I don't think that works. In we're, not, we're not going to do that. I don't right. think that works in football. Okay. All works. right. All right. I just, I just needed that confirmation from you. <laughs> All right. So, uh, year one is in the books. Um, what is the goal for year two? of the Washington commanders. Is there anything that you want to, you know, you know, we talked about the things that, you know, that, you, you know, the plays that you would have back or whatever, like what's, yeah. what would you, you know, what do you want to do in year two that maybe you didn't get to in year one, or, you know, you feel like you could perfect from year one. Yeah. I think, in, I think uh, going forward and like the, the plays you have back is we were able to deliver some great fan experiences this year. You know, I think actually the brand launch again, knowing everybody was not going to be unanimous about it. The, the, the party we had here live with our fans um, uh, where um, we showed the 91 championship teams um, uh, film and, uh, and launched the brand and gave out swag was just a really great moment. We had great moments of execution of in-person events like that one, our fan rally down in Richmond, um, all of those were, were really great. And, and we can and will do more of those. You know, we have our, our draft parties upcoming with information will come out soon. We're going to continue to do those well because we had bright spots in those. You know, our, our, our celebration of our legends this year um, were, were executed well, with, um, with especially culminating with Sonny Jurgensen's uh, jersey retirement at the end. We should be delivering at 100% on every single one of the things that we do instead of 90% of the things that we do. Um, and I'm really proud of the work that was done on the stadium this last year. It goes unsung, um, but, you know, we inherited a, a stadium that needed a lot of work. We inherited a stadium that needed a lot of work. And we didn't get the benefit of our first year here during the COVID season to really see what we needed to fix. Um, but it gets unsung because it's one of those, it's kind of like a kicker in football. You don't say anything until they miss. And if they if they make their field goals, it's it's just a quiet it's it's a quiet commendation. Um, we had no issues this year in uh, in the stadium, right? You, you didn't have any big issues with water leaking. We didn't have any issues around the stadium this year, and that's a, a tribute to the new staff that we've brought in and their leadership. Very quickly got to ground on how to operate this place and got it in real ship shape. Um, uh, ingress, egress, and the time in and out of the building went way down. We we're able to introduce mobile technologies for ordering food, um, really working within, um, moving from the real challenges that we inherited with the stadium and creating a really good experience. Um, and, and then with an, and, and, and gain enough learning that when we're able to do the new venue soon, um, we can make it a world-class experience. So then what I'm hearing is you're still working to upgrade the this current stadium, even though uh was it four more seasons um on the on the current lease? Yeah. Um uh, I mean, it's it's a balance, right? It's a balance. Yeah. You can't go all in and right you can't think that, but we're doing we're we we continue to do things um uh, innovatively year over year. You know, this last year put in a bunch of new seats. I'm looking at it right now, we put in a bunch of new seats in the club section. 
um, or the seats need to be replaced that are um, uh, that help with climate, both in the cold and and heat. Um, we've got new terrace tables that we put in former uh, standing room only sections that allow for a completely different experience. I talked about the mobile ordering technologies, your grab and go kiosk to get your food and get you back to your seat more quickly. We'll continue to do things like that um, with some big upgrades around um, sound and lighting that we'll do this off season uh, to create a better in bowl experience. Um, but it'll be things like that on the margins, not some big, um, some big overhaul because that time, attention, and important resources need to be moving towards um, this next state-of-the-art venue that we're going to be. Okay, and you're not going to give me any. You're not going to give me any scoop on on what's going on with that. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were cool, man. I thought the uh, you know. I think we cool. But <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, uh, FedEx. Oh God, I, I had a follow-up question and I just lost it, but. Um, you know, uh, FedEx field. Yes, there haven't been any, uh, you know, bad uh, yeah. uh, gaffes there. Yeah, which is a big uh, step forward. It's a yeah. Big step forward. yeah. And the team deserves the credit for that. You know, we brought in a amazing woman from the Charlotte Hornets named Trista Langdon, who's our SVP of operations. I think probably one of the more uh, senior black women in the NFL outside of Sandra uh, Douglas Morgan, the president of the Raiders, mm -hmm. um, who just came in and, um, just got her hands dirty and fixing the things that needed to be fixed. I just have such immense trust and pride in her and the rest of this team's leadership. And it shows the power of staffing a diverse team um, because she was able to pull in people, pull in talent that normally might get overlooked, but have transformed this place in a real short amount of time. Okay. All right. Jason Wright, uh, very uh, appreciative for your, uh, of your time. Yeah. Um, uh, hopefully this uh, this brand continues to grow and uh, and and we see uh, some really substantive things uh, happen here coming up in 2023 and beyond. Appreciate your time. Confident it will.